On today's show, why the old approach to reducing taxes must give way to the new. Part one of this week's series on new tax reduction strategies with nationally recognized product taxation expert, Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Ken. Hey, Steve. Good to see you. It's tax time. And of course, Mr. 1040 is in here with us. And uh, I have to say, uh, you need to catch our consumer show because Ken had to lay it out, some nice basic information. You can use this as your evangelistic tool to talk to, to customers, to get out in the public domain. Use it on Facebook. You can Twitter this. Mm -hmm. You can put it on your LinkedIn feed. This is good evangelistic fodder to really get you in front of clients, not only your clients, but maybe some prospects. Ken, uh, we're just going to have to do away with the old approach. I mean, it just doesn't work anymore. They've taken away about everything we've ever been to play. You and I have been in this business a long time. I've been in 30 years. Of, man, you've been longer than I have. And we have to take on a completely new approach and methodology to approaching taxation. Let's talk a few of the things that you want to talk about, kind of like the old, why we can't play that way, and why we have to go to the new strategies. Well, it's interesting. I've been around long enough to see all the changes in the tax law and how uh, tax planning has emerged. And when I first got into it, we had tax brackets as high as 70%. Okay, when you add then the state to that, you could see why tax planning was really critical back then. Along with those higher brackets was also uh, a, a larger uh, palette of tax deductions, exemptions, credits, as well as tax sheltering techniques, which we used to use, for instance, partnerships, where people would buy assets. You know, you buy a building for a million dollars and 950 grand was the bank's money and 50 grand was yours. And if the thing went sour, the bank took back the property and you walked away. Okay. So you might get, you know, you might put $30,000 into a tax shelter back then and get a $50,000 deduction and have no risk. That was the way it mm -hmm. used to be. Well, then along came the, the tax law in 1986, which made major changes, uh, got rid of a lot of deductions. Uh, now made it that you had to be at risk for the money you borrowed. You couldn't just walk away. Uh, and they lowered tax brackets. So all this tax planning and emphasis on tax planning uh, subsided greatly. People said, well, gee, the tax rate isn't so high anymore. It's 28 instead of 70%. The deductions are pretty much gone anyway. I really don't have to pay as much attention to this. But we got in our mind that we had to find tax deductions. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's people come to say, I need some tax planning. I want tax deductions. Well, they've pretty much taken those tax deductions away with the exception of IRAs, qualified plans, 401ks, stuff like that. So we still use those and those are still useful, but really the game, the tax planning opportunity now really is managing uh, deferral, uh, maybe getting some cap gain. Uh, so you have better tax rates, making sure you don't fall into all min alternative minimum tax. And there's a number of methodologies we're gonna talk about on how we can do modern tax mm -hmm. planning but to a large extent, get rid of the concept of tax deductions for the most part, other than qualified plans. Now, you mentioned limited partnerships, and I brought this up, of course, if you've never seen this, but this is from Backroom Technician. And again, you can get your own free demo on there. Just look at the lower third and it'll give you the address. This page has changed in the last 25 years. Oh, dramatically. I mean, this page, I don't see much tax deduction considerations mm -hmm. here any longer. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much it. Why do you want to talk about this from a from a set? What's the old way? You just gave us the yin on that. The new way would be what? Nothing well, from this, right? Yeah, much. on uh, partnerships were there uh, to allow people to get together their their sieves. The mm -hmm. the entity passes all of its deductions through. Mm -hmm. This used to be the epitome of tax planning was done with partnerships. The the name partnership, uh, a lot of people had very bad experiences when they changed the law. They were mm -hmm. angry about it. Partnerships are a thing of the past. They're gone. So that the only reason I picked this is because mm -hmm. it represents the past. Mm -hmm. This doesn't work anymore. Now. When I looked at this and I read this doc, I read this complete doc. I saw no none of the few, the bullet points that used to be on this thing in the 1990s. This they had some great numbers and sure, great bullet points. Sure. Now you did bring up this issue of deductible IRA contributions to traditional IRAs. Now people are still doing this. Sure, there's still a good reason to do this. We first of all we should be saving for retirement anyway. Absolutely. Whether we should be saving it with a deductible plan or not, still up to grab. I don't know what your marginal tax bracket is. I need to know that, and I won't know that until I actually do your see the 1040, see what you're doing. You've been talking a lot about the issues of adjusted gross income and modified. We're going to get into that deeply tomorrow. Well, notice this right here, MAGI. Whether or not you can make a contribution, get a deduction to an IRA, 
if you are a, a participant in a plan or a spouse's plan, is based on MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income, which we're going to be talking about later. So there it is as part of the system is, yeah, you get a deduction, but if you make too much money, you don't. So from now on, what we want to introduce our producers to is not only the traditional, most of us know, yes, adjusted gross income on page one of the 1040 at the bottom line. Now we have to incorporate our thinking, modified adjusted gross income, and just as you said, we have people that are putting in qualified plans based on their AGI and not incorporating this, and we've seen people get kicked back by the IRS and say, you can't deduct this at its full value because your modified adjusted gross income came online. So, you know, we, we said we don't really have to worry about managing taxes like we used to, but now it sounds like the last five, six years, we need to learn how to do this all over again. Well, w what's happened is we had 28% tax brackets. Those are gone. They got rid of the deductions. Now they're they're making the, the uh, rates go up, mm -hmm. and then they're even modifying how much we get to deduct. And so tax planning has, has taken on new urgency. Now, I want to offer a caution and an opportunity to... Our, our producers. One is most of us don't like CPAs because they say no. They get in the way of the planning we mm -hmm. try to do. But here, number one, you start telling people about taxes. Yes, you have your caveat that you don't offer tax advice. Well, sorry, but if you you do and people are angry because they get bad advice, even though you say you're not take, given tax advice, you are and you may be sued. So having a tax advisor, somebody backing you up, uh, reduces your liability. But more important is the opportunity. The opportunity is now tax planning is becoming more and more important again as the tax rates rise, as all of these machinations with AGI and MAGI happen. There are opportunities to plan and life insurance and annuities are a big part of that process, which we'll talk about later. Go out and find some CPAs, some enrolled agents, some tax advisors and planners that you can work with because you say, look, I have clients that I need to do tax planning with, and I want you as part of my team. Mm -hmm. I want to bring these people to you. I want you to run the numbers we want to see. If I do these things with these products, what is the end result? Well, the beauty of that is, yes, you reduce liability, but now you become uh, more professional. Your clients go, wow, he's using a CPA. There's my tax advisors involved. I really can believe this stuff. And then the CPAs and a, and a tax advisors going, gee, I didn't know you could do that. Look mm -hmm. at the impact. Maybe the I way, should use this on the, other that's things. That's the surprise. Most of our CPAs, Ken and I have both taught at the CPA Society. We're shocked many times at how our CPAs really don't understand a lot of the, not only the power of deferral and some of the things, the tactical issues we do, but they're really outside the, the use of using this with a 1040. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about kind of heading for the new approach, which is deferral products and artfully knowing when to take qualified plans and not, because I think that's the play. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Uh, we're with Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. And I want to add to you, one of the big things that we have, Ken is really an ambassador for our business to his brethren, the CPA Society, because many of the CPAs are just coming into some of the things that we've known all our life. Deferral products helping out now because we have such limited deductions. Exemptions are being taken off the table because of MAGI. Some of the credits, pretty much, if you're making any kind of money in the middle class or higher, Credits are almost all off the table. So we have to find other new approaches, new methodologies to reducing taxes. Ken, I want to ask you, when we're talking about using the power of deductible, and this is where I get into this, this debate, we love the deduction. Maybe you have an IRA. Maybe you have a 401k at work where you're getting some of this and there's some tax mitigation. But we're, we're giving up in the end game. We're taking the deduction today, but then we're exposing our entire retirement account using qualified plans. We took the deduction in the distribution period, and that could dicker with our Social Security benefits, whether that's going to get taxed or not. Have you ever figured out what's the yin and yang on that? Should we take the deduction or should we not? Well, you know, 
I've come to the conclusion that we should probably do Roths, and where we, we get no deduction up front, mm -hmm. we get tax deferral in between, and then tax free at the end. The reason I say that is if you assume that the tax bracket up front and at the tail end are exactly the same, which they're probably not going to be, but say you do, there's an argument that the Roth and the regular are pretty much the same, with the exception of the forced distribution at 70 and a half and passing assets to kids and continuing to defer tax-free, okay? But what's happening, most of us are seeing tax rates rise and are saying, gee, by the time you get out, it's quite likely tax rates will be higher than they are today, giving the edge to the deferral. You want the deduction at the higher tax rate when it's mm -hmm. coming out, not the lower rate up front. Uh, furthermore, Social Security, the inclusion of Social Security as part of our tax base is based on adjusted gross income. And if we're taking fully taxable distributions out of an IRA, we're saying, well, gee, I'm only at a 25% tax bracket. But in fact, that income then causes Social Security to be included. The net effective rate, mm -hmm. a, a net effective marginal income tax bracket might be more like 40, 42%, which I've done calculations and come up mm -hmm. with those kinds of numbers. People think they're paying 25%, but effectively they're paying 42. What happened? Their Social Security got increased, it got taxed because they had distributions from an IRA that popped them into higher adjusted gross income. I, I wanna go down this way, because first of all, I just wanna say as a caveat, Ken and I both believe if you're in a high tax bracket and you are also getting any kind of match, either or, high tax bracket or a match from your employer, 401k, go ahead and do it. By all means, because yes, I mean, how means. can you turn down a 50% or 100% bump? Can't. You put in 100 bucks and now you have an extra 50 or 100. I don't care what the tax app Mostly middle, I, I'm Mostly my gripe is middle America because they're going to need the power of some tax m mitigation at the retirement side of this. So the person puts in his $1,000, he gets a $200 tax savings. I say you just gave up future free money, cash flow when you're going to need it the most. Our retirement periods are longer. It's going to be huge. I just want to show this too. Can't... It's it's an emotional issue, Steve. We're it all is. people. We want deductions now. Give it to me now. It's later. It's the deferred benefits and Roth that make the big difference. Well, when I looked on your page here from Backroom Technician, again, I'm looking at this. This is the gauntlet I have to go through right. to find out even if I can deduct it, right? right. So remember, Magi's come on. Modified adjusted gross income has just completely made us. We've had to become somewhat an aficionado again. Yeah, we, we, the, the, the new tax planning really revolves around tax deferral, tax, uh, the kinds of taxes, whether it's cap of gain or not, tax exempt, but also adjusted gross income and modified adjusted gross income. Mm -hmm. Every year, Congress finds a new way to chip away at the effectiveness of deductions, credits, and exemptions, and they're doing it with these AGI and MAGI formulas, and they're really hard to talk about to educate people on. It's just way too complicated. Now you brought up something in another show I just want to bring up now. You said there are several versions and interpretations of modified adjusted gross income. Just touch on that for a second because I thought it was, this is that Magi, no it isn't. No, there's some of them that are similar. When somebody says modified adjusted gross income, uh, it, there could be a couple of them that are pretty similar or mm -hmm. almost exactly the same. But then other MAGIs that apply to different formulas that have an entirely different set of additions. They start with AGI, the number at the bottom of page one. They add back for Social Security taxation, half of your Social Security, your tax-exempt interest, uh, and, and that's one form of M MAGI, but others have different kinds of formulas. So you don't, when they say MAGI, you don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have to go and look at the code or look at the instructions and say, for this specific uh, reduction in benefit, I have to use it this way. For this one, I have to use it differently. Ken, I looked at TurboTax and I tried different angles on my own taxes and I saw different interpretations of MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross, by different dickering, in putting different items in and changing the rules and I, I like, I can't keep Steve, straight. Steve, I'm shocked you become geek eyed Well, you're, I've been hanging with you too long. Yeah, you're actually using software and doing some of this. And, and of course, some of our, our people watching don't know how to do the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think our advisors who really aren't tax advisors should be playing with this because they really then are giving tax mm -hmm. advice. Uh, team up with somebody. Find somebody who will listen, will understand, will support, and work as a team player with you.
Well, that's our show for today. We're going to continue this whole theme all this week. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas, especially this week, don't forget to talk to your tax advisor, your legal counsel, or your broker dealer compliance department. And don't forget, you can watch all our past episodes at downtobusiness.ashbrokers.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow.